This is episode number two with one of my closest friends, Ahab Alhindi. We're going to be talking about Ahab, uh, his journey with finances. Uh, like many of us, we did not get the book on how to manage our money, and some never do. And we live in a time where this is probably more important than ever before to become an accountant with our money and to, to address our behavior and to learn how to get to a place where we're financially free. There's going to be a ton of tactics here. He's going to tell you about where he was, his transformational process, and where he's at today. And I just think for anyone watching this, whether you're someone getting out of high school, a, a family who's living paycheck to paycheck, or someone who's just getting into investing, uh, he, we're going to talk about the behavior changes, uh, how to get good counselors and making sound and wise decisions to grow your money over time in any economy. So do me a favor and please make sure to like, subscribe, and download this podcast. That's going to help this podcast grow, uh, get a bigger audience so that we can continue to get great guests that are going to share awesome content about life balance and creating wealth. Thank you so much. Good to see you, bro. You too, man. Round two. We're going to talk about money. Um, it's such an important topic. And it's 2024. Inflation's still a thing. Um, I want I want I you would be such a great guy to talk about this with because of your journey. Yeah. Um, and, and just the things you've had to go through and the things you're learning now. The journey with money is just like anything. We're never done learning. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of it starts with our belief systems, but what I wanted to do, uh, on this episode is to give some people some real tactics, no matter where they're at, whether they're high, just out of high school and they're trying to figure out how to get there faster. Um, whether it's a, a young family, like most of the people we know who, you know, are living paycheck to paycheck and just find a way to break above that. And they just don't know how. Um, so what I'd love to hear from you is tell me a little bit about when it, like when it started for you, when you started realizing, like, I want to be an entrepreneur because I'm not going to be able to make it with whatever it is I'm doing. And, you know, becoming a business owner was going to be a way for you to potentially become financially free. You know, I, I, I gotta be honest. Uh, maybe you don't know this part of my story. I didn't really have, I didn't like go into business thinking that this was, I didn't make like a great decision going into business, right? I walked into a coffee shop and I I heard the Lord tell me, you should buy this. I did know this part of your story, yeah. You did? Yeah, was that Medane? That was, it was, it was a co coffee shop called Yaks at the time. Yep. And I didn't know what to do with it because I, I felt it so strong. I was like nervous to ask the manager for the owner's email address so I can ask if I can buy it. I, um, but so I sat there and I emailed, um, uh, Mike, Mike, Nancy. And, Mike and Nancy, yeah. the Kearns, wonderful couple. Amazing. And, um, and you know, I didn't mention that I was a believer. I didn't mention anything. I just said this, pro I, I, an email that I probably would have laughed at had I received it myself. Right. Like, and, um, her reply was, I've had a dozen people ask me to buy my business and I've never felt God on it till now. Wow. And it was like one of those confirmation moments. And so I went into business like kind of like like supernatural, like the God like had told me to do it. Mm -hmm. I was I was in ministry. And and then it's not like I was like wildly successful in ministry. I was just just doing what I felt like God told me to do. It's funny because a year before that moment. I was driving and I saw a Domino's pizza car in front of me. And I, I heard God tell me if you, cause I used to deliver pizzas back in uh, college. And I heard God tell me like, if I asked you to do that again, would you do it? And dude, I immediately started crying mm -hmm. and I was like, I'll do anything you asked me to do. Mm -hmm. And so a year later, he's like, buy this restaurant. And I had no rest. Like I had worked at restaurants, but I had not, ever managed or owned one but uh yeah but like for me the, the what i discovered was if you build your business correctly it gives you freedom in your time and in your finances mm -hmm. 
And that was something that as someone who was in ministry and before that working in social work world, um, I never, I never had financial freedom and I never had freedom of my time. Mm-hmm. And so that was something that I, and I, it took me years to learn how to build a business because I had no experience. I'd started from the ground up. I didn't know what I was doing. I converted that business from a Yaks to my brand six months into it. And I did it overnight, like literally overnight. Like we mm-hmm. were Yaks on a Monday and Tuesday we were Medane, you know? And uh, it was a it was a wild experience and it was awesome. I learned so much in the eight years of own, owning that restaurant. I remember that restaurant. The, the food was decent. <laughs> <laughs> At best. Uh, uh, tell me how you really feel. <laughs> Mike and Nancy, I like the X better. Oh, but, uh, wow. No, that's cool. No. So, well, we, we did a podcast before and you talked about the struggle of being an entrepreneur and this isn't that podcast, but w- at what point during that journey did you get to a place where you're like, I really need to feel, I need to find a way to create passive income because now you own a lot of real estate. You're invested in some um, startups. You're doing stocks now. And, 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 you know, you're a guy that lives below your means. I mean, that's one of the things that, that we talk about a lot is that, you know, I come to your house a lot. I mean, you, you live a very simple life. You get kids running all over your share. You share food with people. And I mean, you're, you have a very comfortable life. You're by no means like living in a poverty place, but you, you've learned to live below your means yeah. so that you can take the extra that a lot of people would take and, and spend to upgrade their life. And you're putting it into assets. What happened to make you that person? You. <laughs> you and I were in Oregon. Yeah. And I uh I was making I'm making really good money and um I and I was saving a lot of it, mm-hmm. but I didn't have a purpose. Like I wasn't telling my money what to do. Mm-hmm. Right? And I just I remember sitting in the back of that red Ford Taurus forest. <laughs> And just with my notebook and mm-hmm. just like you were talking and I was writing and you, you taught me to build systems around money mm. and I'm a systems guy. Like I, my life is run on systems. Like my business is run on systems. Everything is run on systems. My money wasn't run on systems. Mm-hmm. And you were like, this is what you do. You know, you make a hundred percent of your income. This is, it's a hundred percent. This much goes towards, I think we do 30% for taxes, right? Roughly, yeah. Right? Yeah. 10% goes to the Lord. 20% is for uh, investment. Yep. And you live, on the, uh, you live on the rest, which is, you know, 40%. And I'm like, okay, this is what I do. And I, I, I when I get my profit, I automatically disperse it. I don't. I don't even have to think about it. My yep. my accounts do it automatically for me now. And it's it's awesome. Yeah. And I don't have to think about it, which is really something that helps me. Like it's just it's something that's now automated. And I saved so much money mm-hmm. this last year just doing the system. Yep. And I was like, this is crazy. It this is works. It totally works. And like you know, we're we're looking at our taxes this year, and we're like, "Hey, we have a fully funded tax account. Mm-hmm. We have a we have a, our, our retirement account is strong, and our investment account is strong." Yep. And I'm like, "This is great. We haven't created an emergency fund." Yep. Right, and we're where we would like spontaneously like go on a trip and hope we had enough money in the bank for it. We're like, hey, "Where do we want to go? We can go anywhere." Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we we have this fund that's going to support our either purchasing power or uh, vacation or lifestyle, yeah. whatever we want. Yep. And so it's been transformational. And I never, as, as funny as how much I love systems, I had, I had never connected the dots to having systems around my money. Yeah, most people don't. I mean, that's that's that part of the problem for for most families. I talk about it all the time, but there's so many people that are excellent 
and professional and brilliant in their lane. Yeah. But they neglected learning how to be, um, to manage their money. There's a guy that I know that's from Reading. He was one of the first real estate brokers I worked for. And he started a company that uh, called My Outdesk. It's a virtual assistant company. It's huge. I think it's a $100 million business. He And back when I knew him, this was 20 years ago, he was in his 20s and he had rentals and super, he followed a very similar plan. He was doing a video the other day and he said, I went to college and I will tell you that the only thing that I went to college for that has benefited me getting my business degree was accounting. Hmm. And, and that made so much sense to me because we all have to learn how to be an accountant with our money. And the sooner you do that, the better. And systems is how you facilitate that. Yeah. Because if we have to think about giving money or saving money, or it's, it's going to be so much harder to do. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's no different than anything else. If you're going to work out in the morning, if you put your shoes out, you lay your clothes out, you put your coffee out, you get it pre-made for the morning, the less you have to think about, the less obstacles in the way, the easier it is to create these habits, right? right. So the first thing I want to say about this before we get into the, the process that I, I shared with you is one of the belief systems that I know will pop up in anyone's mind hearing this right now is easy for you, you own a Chick-fil-A. Mm. Easy for you, whatever. And the truth is, it's easier to make money right now than it's ever been in history. And if you're not making enough money to actually save 20%, because that's going to sound like a lot of money to most people, then you just have to figure out how to do that. And that's where you have to start. Yeah. Um, you may have to get more skills, more certifications, but just assume that that's possible with everything else we talk about today, because it definitely is. And if you don't believe that, then that's the first thing you got to start with is why you don't believe that, because it's truly, there's a way. You know, I heard, I heard it said, it's easier to make $10,000 than it is to save $10,000. Like you can go out and make an additional $10,000 mm -hmm. easier than you could trying to save 10, 100% out of your, out of your paycheck. Yeah. 100%. I mean, we talk about it in our coaching program all the time because we measure people's success. We base it. We always tell people it's not about how much you make. It's how much you save. Yeah. And now we say it's about how much you give. My coach was asking a big group the other day. He said, what kind of guy are you? The guy that wants to make a million dollars a year, save a million dollars a year or give a million dollars a year. Wow. And we're like giving a million dollars a year sounds pretty cool. So, the system is so simple. You know, there's so many financial thought leaders out there. And if you listen to enough of them, you're going to realize they're all saying the same thing. The principle is so simple. The first one is the longevity of investing. There's the wealth is in the long-term curve. When, when your investments go exponential, everything has to be long-term. And I think that's one of the first things people have to think about is, I can't expect to put $10,000 into investment today and have 20,000 next month. And I would add to that. If you think that that's going to cost you a lot of money, you got to have this long-term vision about it. And if it's too good to be true, it probably is. It, yeah, it <laughs> is. I mean, and, and that's fine if you've made mistakes or even if you make more, I have lost a lot of money making bad decisions. I don't regret them because they've helped me make better decisions. Like I don't fall for any get rich stuff anymore. I stay clear of it because I just don't want anything to do with it. I still have emotions around money just like anyone else. I call my financial advisor probably once or twice a month and I ask him what's going on. And, you know, I think I pay him a commission to keep me from burning it all down and <laughs> making a bad decision. <laughs> yeah. So he's always prepared for that call. So, you're making a living. You got to know where you're at. You got to figure out what does it take to keep the lights on at home? And we call that the survival number. Yeah. The second thing we have to do is we have to figure out how do we get three to six months of our survival number into a money market account? Yeah, it's an emergency fund, but it's also your, your vacation money. Like you mentioned, if you have a car that breaks down, what most people will use a credit card for, yeah. that's what that account is for. And we call it a flush account because if it goes down, like when you flush your toilet, it fills right back up. You just take the next few months filling it back up. But the goal is you keep that there. And then you start going into tax deferred 
investments where you can make a return on the investment, but you can also lower your taxable income and save some money paying taxes. And what's amazing, and I'm so excited you're doing this because I shared this with so many people and very few will take action on it. You're one of the first guys I've seen do it. There's several people around us doing it now is it's pretty remarkable how fast six months, eight months, a year goes. And you look and you're like, wow, even if the, we had a bad year in the stock market and you didn't see a a big growth, the fact that you just saved the money is, is it becomes addicting. I, 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 uh, I brought my wife into all of it. And I, you know, I gave her all the logins and all the accounts and, and I was like, um, hey, check out what we did. And she went in there and she was like, whoa. Nice. She goes, I was wondering where everything went. <laughs> Cause I, you know, we're, we have some money over here, some money over here with this invested. And, and she was like, oh, this feels so freeing. Mm-hmm. And she goes, I just thought we were broke. <laughs> I was like, I was like, yeah, we, you know, we're on a we're on a budget, mm-hmm. you know, and being on a budget is okay. Like it's yep, it's actually good for us. Uh, but it's been such, it's been a relief, man. Yeah, and there were seasons where it didn't matter how much money we made, we were we were out we were out spending our income. Yep, and this just was such a simple move that we did, and it. It brought so much peace of mind. Yep. It helped my wife and I's connection. Um, and that's been awesome. It's just yeah. special to see how just adding a system like that can actually solve so many mental problems. Like the the anxiety that I would have about money. I, mm-hmm. It's like, oh, like I have, I was making plenty of money and I had anxiety about money still. Yep. And I had to unlearn having anxiety about money. Yep. And uh, because there was a plan. Yeah. And, you know, if you fail the plan, you plan to fail. Totally. And that's exactly where we were living. And now we have a beautiful plan and it's simple. Like I remember I got back from Oregon and I called you probably like a week later. And I was like, hey, I'm I'm opening up this account and that account. And uh, can you tell me how much of this? And you're like, you're doing it already? And I'm like, I don't want to lose money anymore. (laughs) I I was jacked. To get that call. I was so happy to hear that from you because, you know, it's just when you have your friends doing the same thing as you and, you know, you and I have the same financial planner now and you call me when you're worried about it. And I'm like, yeah, I'm worried too, but follow the plan, dude. He knows what he's doing and we don't. And, and, and I like, I have to learn that the hard way all the time because I think I know what's a good idea, but oftentimes I'm acting out of fear yeah. or greed. Yeah. And those two things have no business in investing. They will kill you every time. Yeah. You know, for example, I know so many people at the beginning of 2023 that sold all their stocks and paid 25% in taxes because they were, they knew the market was going to crash. I made like 22% on my account this year. Wow. My coach made 35%. He has, he had, he, he made $35 million in 2023 just from interest on his investments. Wow. <laughs> you know, so it's like, I can tell you that every time I've thought about selling and I didn't, I'm so grateful I didn't. Now, who knows what 2024 has in store? But here's the thing. If you're not planning on quitting your job and living on your investments for 30 years, you kind of hope the stock market crash is going to happen because that's your one time to buy at a discounted price. And you hope that your stock advisor has his hand on the portfolio. And I would say that if someone's investing Make sure you talk to your stock advisor all the time because the squeaky wheel gets the grease and you want to make sure he cares a lot about your investments and he has mechanisms in place to where if we go into a bear market where things are selling off, he's going to limit your loss and you're only going to lose five or 10% versus 30 or 40. And so there are stocks out there and I think you're in some of them where they have auto sell features where you're protected on the downside, but you're, you have a lot of upside. And, and so I, I just think that going back to your journey, the first thing people have to decide is that this is something that I need to learn. Yeah. I need to stop ignoring it. I need to face my belief systems around it because they're weird yeah. and they're not helping me. And my family is vulnerable. My kids are vulnerable the government cannot be trusted with how they are managing their money. 
I can't depend on social security. And, you know, you need to r realize that this is something that you have to do. And then you have to find a, a proven plan. I had so much like, like, I think going back even to my 20s, I wouldn't look at my bank account because out of anxiety. Mm -hmm. It'd just be like, you know, I'm buying this in faith kind of a deal. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was just kind of foolish, really. Yep. And some of that stuff had carried into adulthood yeah. and into, into the way I operated my finances going into my 40s. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I remember after you and I met, I, uh, I just started going back to the year and saw how much I made versus how much I spent. And I was like, oh my gosh, I, where is my money going? Mm -hmm. Like there's, there isn't anything I can say that I have because of it. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was kind of like embarrassing. And I, I just, it was one of those things that you just didn't want to look at it. You don't want it, to. It, it, it brings up a lot of negative emotions. Totally. Yeah. But the day I decided to do the plan, Mm -hmm. And then the day I like finally finished the plan, I immediately felt like peace mm -hmm. and I felt confidence around it. And I felt, I just felt like I was smarter. Yeah. And I was like, wow, like this is, it's so simple, but having a plan just like, and we talk about this in my business all the time. I talk about it with my leaders all the time. You fail to plan, yeah. you, you know. You're not a guy who is, isn't familiar with plans. Yeah. It was just like this one area. It was a blind spot. Yeah. And it was an intentional blind spot. I was like, I don't want to look over there. Yep. I'm scared of it. And, and the reality is like, once you overcome that fear, like, and you, and you, you stare at it and then you fix the problem, which is just usually you. Mm -hmm. Which is I can fix me. Yep. Right. Um, you know, putting my family on a budget. My wife didn't like it at first, but she loves it now. Yeah. Right. And and it, it all became so much easier. Mm -hmm. And the 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 connection with my family and myself and my just even just feeling a sense of pride. Yeah. Like months down the road, going, look at this. Look what we accomplished. Mm -hmm. Um. It's all worth it, man. Yeah, no, it is. And, and it, at the end of the day, you said it, financial management and learning how to create wealth, it's not as much of a money problem for most of us. It's a behavioral problem. Yeah. And that's why we feel shame around it. I remember to this day that I would go to places like Costco or the fly shop and I'd be at the fly shop. I'd go there to buy a few flies and I'd, I'd end up with a $900 rod yeah. in my, and I'd buy it. And it's like, could I afford it? Yeah. I w my income was good, but I had this very, you know, I, I just was using materialism, honestly, as a way to cope with my pain. Yeah. And it's a coping mechanism. It's a coping mechanism. Yeah. And that's why we see so many people that make a lot of money, like have a lot of problems in their life mm -hmm. because they're, they're using something that isn't going to work to try to deal with something inside. And so it takes some courage, but it, it's, it's doable because I've seen hundreds of people do it. I was thinking about this other day. I've been in the core, the coaching program that I coach for, for 14 years. I've literally, I've probably seen 500 people become multimillionaires in 13 years following this exact program. Wow. 500 people. And many of them didn't go to college. Some of them didn't graduate high school and came into this program with 200, $300,000 in credit card debt, marriage on the rocks, uh, substance abuse, they're the least likely yeah. to be where they're at today. And, and now, you know, you would, you would meet any of these guys and you would, you would think to yourself, like, that is a, an amazing man, hmm. not just a wealthy man, an amazing human being. The, the wealth is just the fruit of having your life in alignment yeah. in the right place. So I'm so excited for you. So let's, so talking about, uh, budgeting, um, and then going into investments the, the, so what we talked about, I believe in the car was, and I teach this to people is going into tax deferred investments, uh, a 401k, a Roth IRA, yeah. and then having a, if you, if you can get a financial advisor, that's great. You don't have to, you know, people can get an E-Trade account they can do it themselves. If you're really disciplined, I find the value for me to having a financial planner is having a barrier between me and my money. Yeah, it's like having someone who's going to stand in the way 
and helping me from making a bad decision when I'm fearful or if I want to make a a crazy investment that I think is going to do really well. And he'll say, well, you know, Chris, you, and I'm like, yeah, let me give it some thought. And a lot of times if it's a, an emotional thing, if I just give something a couple days, I'll kind of get back to my rational thinking, go, no, I'm going to stick with the plan. But one of the things someone said on Instagram the other day, when I put a, I put some questions out there, he's, he said, how do I get over the fear of investing my money because of the fear of losing it in investments when I work so hard for it? And I want to address that question really quick, because that's a real fear. We all have it, right? Yeah. We're, we're, there, there's the fear of, of facing the finances, but then there's the fear of putting it into these systems that I don't understand. Some say is corrupt and it might be. And, and I want to just address that for a second. I had a lady call me not too long ago. And she said, I don't want to invest in the stock market because BlackRock and Disney and all these companies are corrupt. And and I, I just sat her down and I said, well, let me ask you a question. You're in your 50s. How much money do you have right now? She's not very much. I said, okay, so then what are you afraid of? It sounds like you're afraid of losing everything. Well, you don't have anything. Hmm. And I said, and you're keeping your money in a bank, right? Well, you realize having money in the dollar is still being an investment, right? Mm. And that investment hasn't been doing so good lately. In fact, if they keep doing what they're doing at the Federal Reserve, that investment is going to keep going down. So when you start looking at it rationally and you realize I'm invested, whether I like it or not, I'm invested either in flat screen TVs and fast food restaurants, yeah. pun intended, um, or I'm in the bank or I'm going to go into some other asset class that over the course of time has been, has always done well. There's potentially tax advantages. And when you start looking at like that, the fear starts going down. But I just think a lot of people aren't learning these things because they're not looking at it. So how did you overcome that fear? I, I just trust Neil at this point. Yeah. Right. Like it was really helpful for me to, cause I had lost a lot of money in the stock market. And that was what I, when I sat down with him, I said, listen, like, I always think I'm smarter than I am. Um, I always, I bet on myself a lot and I've lost a lot of money and I, I, I pretend like I know what I'm doing when I'm winning and then I hate myself when I'm losing mm -hmm. and I would rather hate you, Neil. <laughs> 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 and so I, I just basically told him, I was like, I just need someone who, that this is their life. Mm -hmm. This is what they study day in and yep. day out. This is what they focus on. And I, I want it to be you. Mm -hmm. And, and it was, it was a pretty easy decision for me because I had to get myself out of the way. Yeah. I had to separate myself from the money yep. because I, I would make decisions based on a hot, uh, thing I heard on the internet or, or like somebody talking and, and I would do research, which means I Googled it for like five minutes and, and it wasn't, it wasn't enough. I needed somebody who was living in it yep. and that helped me to get, get, get the fear out of the way. Because mm -hmm. I knew my past experience was I either made a lot or I made, or, or I lost a lot. Mm -hmm. And, and it wasn't, it wasn't what I wanted. Yeah. It wasn't the way I wanted to live. Cause I, that self hatred, yeah. I'll do anything to avoid that thing. Yeah. Yeah. The last thing I'll say on this is when I meet with people that want to buy a house, I'm going to do a mortgage for them. I just had one recently. They, these people were financially in a great spot. I was proud of them. They're in their thir young, young thirties, a very little debt, 20% down on a house. And they're going to be going, they're a move up buyer. So they got a house. They want to move up to a, a, a more expensive home nice. payments. Obviously it was $1,200 higher and super conservative. They're like, well, we only have 12 years left on our mortgage. Our payments so low. Do you think this is a good decision? And I looked at them and I just said, well, let's, let's go long-term on this. You guys are both getting stirs. How's your retirement looking? It's looking great. Cool. What's your income scale over the next five years? We're both going to get raises. It should keep going up. And at the end of the day for them, what I just had to tell them is like, you know, if you, your decision is so easy, you guys are worried about this additional 1200 bucks. You need to go down to your budget and you need to look at what are you spending money on right now? And if you're thinking that you're going to have to trade your lifestyle for a better house, it's is whatever we're spending it on now a better life than what this house would give us? And then you'll have your answer. And what I find is most people that say, 
they don't want to be house rich and cash poor. What they don't realize is they're already living like they're poor because they're just spending their money on things that they really aren't giving them the quality of life they want. And these people want to have kids and have a family. They definitely need a bigger house and a better house. And they could have clearly afforded it. And I'm not talking about people that can't, like these people are in a great spot. And so I think that that's one of the things people have to think about is, um, what are we actually trading our dollars for now? And what is it giving us? And and that will also help you when you start thinking about these things. So bro, thank you so much for having this conversation today. Hope me. you guys got a lot out of it. And um, if you would, we would love to get a comment. Uh, please download, subscribe, and thanks for watching today.